as an instructor, I think it's also important that I have the courage to experiment with how I run the class and um, allow myself to um, fail when appropriate. So, um, you know, not everything is going to work, but if I'm afraid of trying new things because they might not work, then, um, then I, I, I'm going to put myself in a pretty static uh, teaching environment. So, um, for example, a few years ago, you know, I was teaching um, a marketing research class and I'm really struggling with how to get the students to understand experimental design. And um, I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine who teaches in the geology department and um, he was talking to me about how he uses Mentos and Coke to teach how volcanoes work. And um, it occurred to me that one could use that same process for teaching experimental design in a fun and engaging way. So uh, we developed a whole process around um, designing an experiment that would determine the optimal combination of soft drinks and Mentos in order to make the biggest explosion. So, you know, uh, that means that we have to operationalize what we mean by biggest explosion. It means that we have to uh, set up experimental groups and um, stick in appropriate controls. Um, and as we think about all of that, um, and we get the students to start thinking about all of that, they'll understand um, design in a way that, that they can apply to Mentos and Coke, but they can also apply to, um, you know, market testing a new advertising campaign. So how are they going to get the biggest in impact from their campaign? Um, but we start off by experimenting with a new approach to, um, to um, thinking about what experimental design might be. And so it takes a certain amount of courage to uh, approach a class and say, okay, today we're going to go outside and we're going to um, drop Mentos in Coke and at the end of it you're going to understand how to run an experiment. Um, that one happened to work very well. It's possible though that, that um, I can do something and I, and I have done things um, in classes where you know, I've tried to approach a topic in a certain way, it hasn't really worked out, and I've had to back away from it and, and try a different way. So, um, you know, I, I think last quarter I tried to teach the impact of cannibalization. If you introduce a new product that cannibalizes an old product, I, I, I approached this in a, in a bunch of different ways and it just wasn't sticking. Um, and so I had to come up with another example that was, um, I think, a lot more accessible to the students. And it, but it took me a few tries to get there. So instead of talking about golf balls or flanker brands or anything else, I talked to them about waffles and pancakes. What happens to your waffle business when you start selling pancakes? And how do you decide whether the, selling the pancakes is going to help your business or hurt your business? And so just making it a really simple idea like that, the students like waffles, so they like thinking about waffles. Uh, we were able to get everyone through and everyone to understand it. And, and that was very, very satisfying. There's also an old question that, that's been going around, and I, I, I think I first heard it on NPR, um, a, a question, that, a social question, um, about whether would we prefer to have the superpower of flight or the superpower of invisibility. And it's kind of a fun question, it's kind of an interesting question, it's a question that engages students, but in my marketing research class, I would start off the quarter with a, a survey that the students have to take. And I asked them a bunch of questions about uh, things related to their knowledge of marketing research or their knowledge of marketing. Um, and I, and I use those questions to slip in uh, examples of different question forms that we'll then come back to later in the quarter. But I also asked them this question of, would you prefer flight or invisibility if you had to choose between a superpower? And, um, and then when I reintroduce that later in the class, um, they always remember it, um, but they start to think about and hypothesize about why one would prefer 
the power of flight over invisibility or vice versa. And so they come up with different uh, ideas about why one might be true or the other might be true. And, um, and then we can turn around and just take the data from the class or take the data from prior periods and start testing it. Um, and so this gets them to thinking about, okay, what is a, what is a hypothesis? How would I might, might I test that hypothesis in a very basic way? So as they start thinking about what, what is a good or a bad hypothesis, we, we, can, we can talk about that in a context that doesn't really seem so incredibly complex to them and actually seems kind of fun and whimsical.